to lecture at uni to talk about one of the texts each or a couple of the texts each. They'll do some lectures and then this particular forum also has the chief assessor talking about the new exam format and how to write the, especially how to write the essays to score well. Is it free? I think it's free or it's five or ten dollars or something like that. I can double check for you. It's this Sunday coming and I think it's at Melbourne University. Um, which you can take the train to. I'm going to post more. Um, I'll post all the details on Facebook for people or I might email them out. Okay. If there are a couple of people going, I will go as well. Um, and I can, that's my old genie, so I can show you around if you like, give you a tour. Uh, Phil Davis talk. What? Totally fun. Uh, I enjoy that. But if you guys aren't going, then I'm just going to stay home with my kid. So, what time does it start? Uh, that's a really good question that I don't have the answer to. Okay. Probably like 10 a.m. or something. Oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, right. I wake up at 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post more details on that. Uh, Susan Wolf, though, is a fairly famous uh, philosopher. She's still alive, like I said. She has taught at, or well, maybe she learnt at Yale in over there. She's taught at John Hopkins. She's taught at Harvard for a while. She then took a, a teaching job at the university that her husband, who's also a philosopher, works at. Uh, and she's the head of the philosophy department there. She's done some work on free will and how we can still have it even if the world is determined. It's called compatibilism. She's done some work on the demandingness of morality. A lot of philosophers in the last couple, well, maybe the last couple of decades I've questioned the idea that morality should be an overriding motivation for all action. Motivation for all action. So even if it's wrong to do something, we might still have a reason to do it. Or even if something is good to do, we might still have a different kind of reason not to do it, or we might want to pursue that. That's the idea. Yeah, Susan Wolf wrote an essay called Moral Saints, which basically just says that saints are these perfect kind of people but she thinks that they're really boring, annoying people to hang around with, that you wouldn't want to be friends with any of them. Yeah, because they'd all be saying things like, you can't drink alcohol, that's terrible for you, put that down. You're like, I just want to drink. Yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> so she wrote that article, which is really famous and well known. I studied it that at university when I was there. Uh, she also wrote this book called Meaning in Life and Why It Matters, which is this. All of our books are looks like this, but this is the one that she wrote for this one. Uh, meaning in life and why it matters is this section. Meaning in life is this section. That's what we're reading. Then she's got another section called why it matters, which goes for that. Then, this is very standard philosophy practice, which is actually really good, I think. Um, that is a critique. So it is that. So it is that. And so is that. There are four critiques from professional philosophers, which means that she wrote down meaning in life, and she wrote down why it matters, two chapters. They're basically just lectures written down. And then she sent them around to basically heaps of philosophers, and they sent back all the problems that they think in those sections. And she put in all those people's thoughts on all the problems with their theory, and then she, at the end, wrote a response, saying, I see why you think that's a problem, but it's not. Deal with it. Basically. Does that make sense? Okay. So, it's pretty nice text. If you're interested in this topic as we read through, you might want to buy the text. I think it was like 40 bucks or something, but it's totally up to you, of course. Uh, it's totally up to you. Let's have a read. Just show us something. 
Susan Wolf is very different to Nietzsche, so this will be interesting. She's actually very different to all of the philosophers we've studied on the good life. Descartes. All right. Although Wolf's essay is predominantly mostly concerned with the problem of meaningfulness, what it is, how it's attained, and the kind of activities that both produce and are expressions of it, Wolf's starting point is the question of human motivation. Why is it that we do the things that we do? All the philosophers, when they start thinking about how should we live, inevitably start thinking about what are our motivations? What makes us the way we are? What kind of things are we? At the beginning of the essay, Wolf identifies two common philosophical positions in relation to this question. One is psychological egoism. It's the view that what motivates our behavior is self-interest. We look out for ourselves, we want to accomplish our goals for us. Even acts that seem to be other regarding, that seem to be for other people, such as putting yourself in mortal danger to save one's comrades during battle, or sacrificing your own freedom to care for a sick child, etc., are, according to the psychological egoist, really done for our own benefit. Why would you jump in front of uh, a bullet for someone else, how could that be for your own benefit? Makes you feel good about it. Right, so you feel good about who you are, right? You feel good about your identity? And like, you couldn't live with yourself if you didn't, or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, all right, let's skip down to psychological egoism. Uh, it is often contrasted with psychological altruism. Do you guys see that? Psychological altruism. This is the view that at least some of the time, our motives are altruistic, they're other regarding. Although psychological altruism does seem a more plausible explanation of human motivation in some circumstances, it doesn't square with the commonly held view that human nature is essentially self-regarding. Concerned, are we concerned just and only about ourselves, deep down? Or, deep down, are we motivated by concern for other people that doesn't affect us? in a way that doesn't affect us. This is important to understand. Uh, talk to the person next to you. Do you think altruistic acts are possible? Do they happen or not? Is everything just about serving our self-interest? No matter the yeah, detriment, yeah. I, I could not do it, and I'll be fine. It's just to do something for me. It's about to win it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like purely care for them as opposed to care for yourself and them. Yeah. All right, hand up if you think that altruistic acts are possible or happen. Let's move on. Oh, we got two, three optimistic people among us. Hand up if you think no, it's all just about self interest at the end. Hand up if you're like you're not sure yet, but you're somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, let's go to the reading and let's start having a read. One nice thing about Susan Wolf still being alive is that she writes like a a current day person with English that we are used to. Now, that doesn't mean that it's simple, right? It's it's still complicated and dense language. Um, as we go through, I am sorry there are some notes on the page. Let's get when I got this book. Uh, last year over the holidays I was reading it and I was just writing notes in as I go, as I went and then I was like, oh damn, I have to copy this. <laughs> so you've got some notes, they're not really very detailed notes, but there you go. You see how, you see how I write notes when I'm just doing some holiday reading. 
So it's your interest. All right. So a false dichotomy, which means a false setting up of opposites between two things. Philosophical models of human psychology, or more specifically of human motivation, tend to fall into one of two categories. We say people motivated either in one way or another way. Perhaps the oldest and most popular model conceives of human beings as egoists, moved and guided exclusively by what they take to be their own self-interest. However, there have long been defenders of a dualistic model of motivation. We have two kinds of motivation as well. According to which people are capable of being moved not only by self-interest, so that's one thing that moves them, but also by something higher, something other than self-interest. Kant, for example, is a famous philosopher, famous, famously thought that in addition to being subject to inclinations, people are capable of being moved and directed by reason alone. Uh, very briefly, talk to the person next to you. Do you think that pure reason and rationality can be a motivation for human action? Is that an essential part of the way we are? Or are we just moved by self-interest and emotions? Yes. Talk to the person next to you. Yeah. 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 In terms of this, you just mean dualist in terms of various kinds of motivation. Yeah, because the word dualist kind of actually has a kind of drive to be helpful. And when we talk about metaphysics, it's not a vision of the way to do that stuff. But here it is, that's what it is. Yeah, just picking the drive. Just probably the drive. The drive is still there. Oh, yeah, but the second drive is rational. Although, actually, she probably. Closely linked to these two descriptive models of human motivation are prescriptive or normative models of practical reason. Descriptive models say this is the way this is. A descriptive model of a tree says the leaves are whatever colour they are. A prescriptive or a normative model says this is the way something should be. Yeah? And that would say the tree should grow upwards and have six branches. Does that make sense? Descriptive models describe the way it is. Do you guys want to write notes? Yes. yes. Alright. So, a false dichotomy is that thing for this moment. False dichotomy.
Guys, let me briefly explain these board notes and then I'll give you your homework. We have two descriptive models of human motivation. They say these are the things humans are motivated by. One says we're just motivated by self interest. The other says we're motivated by self interest, but also we can be motivated by like purely rational reasons, or we can be motivated by other regarding reasons. There's some other way that we can be motivated. There are two prescriptive models that are very linked to these descriptive models. If you buy this one, you probably buy this one. You say rational egoism is the way we are. We should seek our own good, and we should be rational only to seek our own good. And we're only rational as far as you are seeking your own good. This has been really popular, especially really obviously in economics, where they just assume that everyone wants to get as much money as possible. Turns out that actually isn't the way people work. People don't always just want money. They often want money, but not always. The second one here links with this one. Rational egoism plus the impersonal perspective. We should do what's right from the point of view of the universe, or what's objectively right, or what's rationally right, or like maybe act in a way that you would want everyone else to act, is Kant's categorical imperative. So we should seek our own good, but we can also be rational and do what is objectively best. Even if it's not best for you, you might want to be honest. Even when it's just obviously not best for you. Does that make sense? I'd like you guys to read to the top of column 18 in the reading, as well as doing your one question for Wednesday. Oh, one question for that. Oh, one question. Yeah, there's a bit in there. I'd like you to read that for Wednesday, please. Oh, we are really trying to get through this uh, reading. Sir, do we okay. know when the suck is yet? Uh, we don't know when the suck is, because it will depend completely. I suspect it will be next turn. I only just realised that um, three three-way conference is on a double on our Wednesday. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Just go yeah. and yeah. announce. Yeah. 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 Yeah.